All right, Mr. Ledan, you're here for Mr. DeWitt. Yes, Your Honor, Mira right. Ledan, we have Mr. DeWitt. Okay, and um, my... Was he already seen on the other? Oh, because he was our award, so he wouldn't. Okay, so he wouldn't have been award. seen by that. Right. Can you just state your name for the record for me? Yes, Your Honor. It's Jeremy Charles DeWitt, Your Honor. All right, Mr. DeWitt, looks like you, you came on the docket because you have a number of out on release cases, and so that's why they held you, even though you were our award on the new law. Yes, Your um, Honor. And so, um, I don't know. Your Honor, the state is uh, requesting. Can you just. Mary Lynn Honeymeyer for the state. Um, the state's requesting that the defendant's bonds be revoked on his three prior cases. How can I revoke bonds when the offense date occurred? This offense date occurred afterwards, Your Honor. The defendant was arrested on September 7, 2019. When the defendant was here last time, the defendant misrepresented to the court that all these offenses happened prior to the 9-7 offense date. That is not the case. So the first case he was arrested on was 2019 CF. 12733. Right, and he was seen by a judge on the 8th, correct? Yes. Okay. And then the case for 2019 CF 15055, the offense date for that was September 16th, 2019. But he hadn't been seen by a judge. And that he was not arrested at that date, but that was when the felony offense took place. Okay. He was then seen by a judge when the defendant represented to the judge at initial appearance that this. 20, this 15055 case happened before. It did not happen before. And this case that he's here on, 20CF 1853, happened on October 1st, 2019. So again, after the September 7th, the cases where he has been out on bond, when he was seen by a judge on September 8th, he was on release for that. And he has consistently picked up new law offenses since that September 7th date well I mean I understand that I could revoke on the 19 case I don't know how I could revoke if he hadn't been seen by a judge before so that would be for this offense because the new law offense is alleged to have occurred October 1st October 1st yeah so so the state would be requesting that his bond be revoked on the one that he was out on bond okay, for because you said bonds sorry sorry okay judge. all right because that's why I was trying to figure out what you what you meant because yes. I don't think I can revoke on the other cases the other ones your honor the bonds can stay the same but the one that he was out on bond for at the time the 2019 CF 12733 the state is requesting that that bond be revoked all right Mr. Laton do you have any argument Yes, Your Honor. So I, I agree with the court's analysis and was going to raise that issue, but it's been resolved. So I'll, I'll pass to the next issue for me. Um, all of these cases flow from video that was taken from my client as a result of his arrest in Windermere. We're not here to litigate that case, but for the court's consideration, one of the main elements of this offense that's alleged is that my client intentionally intercepted conversations. And what I think it's important for the court to understand for today's purposes is this. Mr. DeWitt operates a business that uses body cameras. Those body cameras are on all of his um, uniformed personnel that operate these funeral escorts. Those body cameras are always running. So in the event that law enforcement obtained these videos and is now going through systematic, systematically to find what else they can potentially charge my client with, what they're finding are those recordings. And so the issue of intent is really what's at stake here. I don't know that there's any way we're going to get to the bottom of that today and don't expect the court to make that assessment, but I think before you revoke this man's bond and keep him in jail, I'd like you to at least consider the fact that that is the source of this audio. And Isn't this a recorded phone conversation? Correct, but anytime he, it's a, it's a helmet cam and a body camera. So anytime it's running, if he makes a phone call, it's going to record it. Your Honor, if I may, I don't believe that this was body worn camera footage that was recording yeah, in not, this I, case. I, I, I have seen. That. Uh, I have seen the audio of it. It isn't from the defendant's body worn camera. I, that's my understanding. So I understand what the defense is saying, but that is an argument to be made not of whether or not his bond should be revoked, but an argument of whether or not there's PC, which has already been found essentially. Okay, because I mean, based on one of the affidavits, it says that I reviewed the above mentioned disc that they received from Chief Edwards. Um, 
who, which he obtained from Detective John Allen with the Windermere Police Department. And the disc contained an audio file of a recorded phone conversation that took place on October 1st between a person who identified himself as the defendant, um, a crime scene analyst, and um, the individual, um, looks like Gregory Fosterino. Um, so I, I don't know whether, Mr. DeWitt, I wouldn't make any facial expressions or motions or anything. You have an attorney who's capable of arguing whatever they need to argue for you, okay? So um, I, I, I don't know if it's a body camera, helmet, whatever is being recorded, but it appears as though it's some sort of a recording of an audio file from a phone conversation. So I, I'm not, I, I don't feel like I know enough about what happened, but it's two sworn statements. I understand and that, then the so. judge who signed the capius, Mr. DeWitt, if you can't behave, and no, conform, I, I, then I can, we'll Honor. remove I, you. No, okay. Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. So, um, my concern is this. We, I know we don't know enough about it, but yeah. my point is simply this. These are all videos. We, we could be in this position tomorrow, next week, next month, because they're going to continue to review this. I conduct. never saw him on any other case. Right. I know that Judge Carter, I believe, did, and maybe did. some other judges. So, I, I don't know. And I, so, you know, what I don't know anything about the facts of any of the underlying cases okay. either. Well, they all flow from this Windermere uh, arrest. So, the, uh, however, the audio was obtained, it was obtained from my client's uh, business records that are maintained on, um, on his person and on every one of his employees. And so, my point is simply I think it's a bit disingenuous to say. Uh, definitively that he's out on bond committing new law offenses when the sourcing of this is directly from the recordings that are maintained through his business. So I'd, I'd rather have an opportunity to have my client out on bond where he can assist me with his defenses and to continue to represent him in that capacity than have him in, in custody. One. Two, um, his wife is how many months pregnant? Uh, she's 20 weeks. Okay. And this is our third, well, it's our first baby, but our third chance. She's had two miscarriages previously. So there's a lot of medical issues going on at home. There's a lot of stress that's related to the pregnancy uh, in light of the, the prior miscarriages. So while that's not uh, you know, necessarily an issue of uh, the, the lawfulness of revoking the bond, I do want the court to at least be mindful of where he is and what we're trying to do. Mr. DeWitt is, has not done anything in months to do anything in opposition to the law, I'm monitoring everything that we're doing on these cases and they all do have a potential issue based on what Windermere did in that first case, which we'll be litigating, but it's gonna take time and money and effort to do those things and none of those things are gonna happen if he's in jail. So I, I really need him to be out. All right, any last argument? Your Honor, so the state's argument is that the defendant has violated his conditions of pretrial release and that there are no re conditions of release that can reasonably protect the community from risk to physical harm to persons. The defendant is continuing to be a risk to the community. His business practice continues to be a risk to the community. Um, the defendant is consistently picking up felony charges while out on bond. The defendant's bond should be revoked for those reasons. Okay. So you can file a motion to revoke bond and let the trial division determine that, um, but I'm not going to revoke his bond today. Um, and so you have motions that you can file, um, but I'm not going to revoke the bond based on <laughs> the affidavits and, because I really don't know where the information came from and when it came from and in the, I just don't feel comfortable doing that because I don't know enough. So, um, but you have the opportunity to file any appropriate motions in the trial division and looks like the only case that the bond could be revoked on would be the 19 CF 12733 based on the dates of the offense, possibly the one in Osceola County, which I'm not gonna take any action on that either. That's 2019 CF 3928. So it looks like there's two cases that possible that a bond could be revoked on, but I'm not gonna take any action today, okay? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right.